Hi guys, this is Ryan from Off Topic Games coming at you guys with a commentary of our finals at our locals recently. So on the left we have Chaos Breaker and on the right we have Prisms. Uh, of course Chaos Breaker is favored in this matchup. All they have to do is really lock three of your things and your Vanguard no longer does anything. Um, it's just kind of a really hard matchup for Bermudas. Uh, Bermuda can try and aggro the Chaos Breaker player early. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of hard for the Bermuda player. Uh, Link Joker wins the Junkan. I see two grade ones and three triggers in the Link Joker player hand. He, yeah, he doesn't like it. Uh, Prism player hand looks like he's mulling two, which means he probably has grades one, two, and three. Uh, good stuff. Uh, things that the Marina player kind of wants to make this matchup a lot easier is like the Celtic. So I would keep grade one Celtic and another grade two if I had the option. Uh, Celtic's really good in this matchup. Uh, it allows you to aggro Chaos Breaker early before they start developing their hand size off of locking your stuff and popping it. Uh, they're junk adding again for... Okay, no, they just remembered. Uh, interesting Prism... Or interesting Bermuda starter coming out from the Prism player. Uh, that's the move it into soul and bouncy unit. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, so he rides the Leite, which is... It's okay. You're in a decent amount, so it probably doesn't matter. Hmm. Uh, I like that he's going to aggro him. Uh, it's pretty strong. I don't like calling the trigger behind the 7k, because 7 plus 4 is 11, and 11 against 7 versus 7 against 7 doesn't matter. Uh... But, yeah, I honestly can't really think of a reason why he called that there. Because he could use the starter and bounce it anyways next turn if he just calls it from hand. So, yep, attack the 7k to punish it. Rides the 12k attacker. Yep, using the starter, bouncing the crit trigger, activating. I would search for vert here unless she already has the vert. Um, yeah, but the crit trigger is allowed to search vert, rosa, or clear. And not a lot of people run clear in the deck. I think we run one just because of that searchability. But let's see what he grabs here. Searches Rosa, probably means he has the vert. Uh, means he probably wants to like go a little aggressive, I would assume. But um, yeah, I would definitely attack the grade one. Like I would call something and attack the grade one. But I guess not. Generally I like to front like generally I like to punish the grade ones on the front just because it's easy targets to punish. And also uh it's harder to get boosters in the deck. Well I mean I guess it doesn't matter too much because of the searcher. But the Chaos Breaker player not riding uh hits the crit which makes it awkward because I think he was gonna try and play around Sabreeze, but uh I think getting Sabreezed is better than taking any of the other Prism strides. Alright, rides the vert. I see another vert in his hand too, so he has stride fodder for next turn. I wonder if he'll call like a full field to play around the universe. 
Yeah, he does. Uh, I like this. So, the Chaos Breaker player wants Celtic to hit. Because even if he does take the plus, uh, it opens up something for your universe to actually work. No guards the Vanguard, that's whatever, he's at 3. So yeah, you definitely guard the Rosa here, and you take the Celtic. Generally, that's wrong, but I think in this situation, it's right. So, Chaos Breaker player is going now. Hopefully, he... Oh, he doesn't have the grade 3. So, like, what he could have done here if he had the Chaos Breaker is he could have rode Chaos Breaker, showed into Universe, locked the thing behind it, and then uh, used the Radon in his hand. Or, sorry, not Radon, but Photon in his hand to lock the Celtic. Or he could have just used Chaos Breaker's ability to lock the Rosa and then using... Or, like, lock one in the front row and then use the Radon to lock the other one. Um, but, unfortunately, he also misses the G assist. So, attacks the Celtic because you want to minus them. Giving them more counter blasts to play with isn't good. Passes turn because the 7k doesn't hit. Oh, this is just unfortunate for the Chaos Breaker player. Uh, chances are he does not survive this. One to pass. Bermuda player hits it pretty good. And yeah, so scoop it up. Go to game two. Uh, that was kind of unfortunate for the Chaos Breaker player, because the matchup is so easy. Like, it feels bad being unlucky like that. Like, literally, there's, there's like, one win condition in the deck, and it's super easy to pull off, and it's literally just ride Chaos Breaker. So not being able to get that is kind of <laughs> almost demoralizing, if you ask me. Not even, like, getting the bringer either, which could have also turned the game. So yeah, things the Chaos Breaker player needs to do to win is, like, literally draw the grade 3. Uh, Bermuda player did everything alright, except for I didn't like the calling of the 4k behind the 7k to hit 11 when it doesn't matter. Okay, so the Chaos Breaker player mulligans 2, which means the hand isn't terrible. Bermuda player, I guess, Mulligan 1. So, uh, I guess he has a really so pretty solid hand. Looks like the Chaos Breaker player is going first again. I believe that's Prometheus or Prometheum or whatever. Uh, it's not a terrible ride. It's kind of whatever. Not as a, it's like not as powerful as it used to be back when back in limit break format or break ride format. Swings vanilla. Yep. If the Bermuda player has a Celtic in hand, they want to take that. Okay, it rides the Celtic. Debating about what to call. Oh, I think he's deciding if he wants to ride Celtic or not. Uh, I would just ride it. It's probably better than calling it to the rearguard circle because if he has Chaos Breaker or Bringer, that Celtic's locked for the rest of the game. So at least you can try and get, like, the value out of it here, or choose not to ride the turn after. Hits nothing, but bounces the starter and draws a card. Celtic's so good. It's probably, like, one of the best grade twos in, like, the game. Chaos Breaker player chooses not to ride. 
which either means he's grade locked again or his ride isn't optimal. And that he doesn't think the Bermuda player can punish him too hard. Ooh, Spica. So that's a non Prism Counter Blast in the damage. Uh, personally, I don't like Spica in the deck, but uh, I have seen it work. So, uh, again, it comes down to a player preference thing. Uh, there's the Limit Break Enabler, which means Labrador is going to do some work. Yeah, swinging with the crit against Chaos Breaker when they're at two isn't like isn't too scary for like, for, like the Chaos Breaker player, but there is the chance that like the Bermuda player just double crits you and you die. Hits nothing, which probably puts the Chaos Breaker player at ease. Well, going to 5, that tells us that his hand isn't too good, and he has to guard this attack with 2 grade 1s, like 2 5Ks. Which means the hand probably isn't optimal. Uh, probably, like, I haven't seen him trigger all game, or I haven't seen any triggers go to damage, or even, like, watching his draws, like, he hasn't really been drawing. But goes into Chaos Breaker, opts not to stride, because he can't really go into anything good. Calls the Photon, locks the other front row. It's unfortunate that he doesn't have a way to lock the back, like if he had the crit trigger, then Labrador actually does nothing. And even, or I guess the Vert Stride can still do stuff, but it's not as powerful. Also, if you're going to go back into your deck, don't shuffle the first time. So like, say you search out a card, and then you know you're going to search out another card right after without having to draw or something, or like get a card off the top. Please just search the two, and just show the way to search it. Just do the Yu-Gi-Oh! and just be like, oh, I'm going back in. Which is why like, I hate when your Chronicle players do that, because it makes the turns go by so much longer, and time is such a big issue now. Uh, but, yeah... It's kind of just irritating, honestly. Drive check, we see two blanks. Alright, so I would guard this, or I would uh, no guard this one and then guard the next one. But I guess he wants to guard both because he's afraid of taking damage or something. Oh, chooses actually to take it. I think. Yeah, he takes it. Alright, um, so... <laughs> in the world of guarding in Vanguard, if you're gonna take... If you're gonna take one of the two rear guards and they're both the same power, take the first one in case you hit a damage trigger. It makes it so much easier to guard. Like, you can just intercept if you're not playing against Chaos Breaker. Of course, it didn't matter here because you didn't hit the damage trigger, but just remember... Uh, Chaos Breaker player looks like he has nothing in hand, so he's taking the first one and hoping he heals. Oh, triple trigger. Okay, and our Chaos Breaker player loses. That's unfortunate, guys. Um, yeah, it seems like he just hit nothing. Uh, if you like this, please leave a like below. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave that in the comment section below. And please check out our social media. Links are in the description below. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.